Sisters and brothers, welcome to worship here at St. Giles Presbyterian Church. We are glad to be able to gather with you and worship with you and praise God and be together. This is indeed a wild time to be living in. I think people say that all the time, but it really feels wild to be living when we are living right now. As you know, COVID numbers are on the way up again. Just after a period when we thought we were doing really well, a new variant has come along, the game has yet again changed. So, a huge part of what we're going to be talking about today is asking and trying to answer the question, what's mine to do in this world? If you have gotten a vaccine, thank you. If you have not gotten a vaccine, the people who we are talking to, the healthcare providers, the people who are working in ICUs, in emergency rooms, are seeing huge upticks in the number of children and, and younger people who are coming into those spaces. They're talking to us about the reality and the crushing pain that they are facing. We can each do our part by talking to our healthcare providers about vaccines, by wearing the masks if you've been doing it, and continuing to stick with this and stick it through it. I know it's hard, and I'm grateful for each and every one of you and the part that you are playing, the work that you are doing, and the ways that you are keeping our family, our church, our community safe and healthy. So thank you. Another thing that you might be able to do to help is we still need three Sunday school teachers. We need two for elementary age teaching and one for a fifth through seventh grade class. So pray about that, think about that, ponder about that, hear that God may be calling you to help out once a month in Sunday school to help share the faith with a younger generation so that they might be nurtured and grow in grace and wisdom and love and mercy. My final announcement today is that Wesley Bowman's parents, Gilbert and Nancy Bowman, donated the, fl uh, the flowers that you see so beautifully displayed on the chancel. He died last week and he will have his memorial service um, this afternoon. So we continue to grieve and pray with the Bowman family in this time of unexpected loss, and also to celebrate the gift of Wesley's life and all that we are together. Welcome to worship. Please rise in body or spirit for the call to worship.
As the church, we are called to be the body of Christ. We are As the church, we are the body of Christ. Where there is conflict, we work toward reconciliation. We share what we have, so all have enough. We are the body of Christ. We are all different. God created this, and we are wise to remember and care for the gifts that God has provided. In Jesus Christ, we are called together to be one body. In Jesus Christ, we find our life. In Jesus Christ, we find our breath. In Jesus Christ, we find our hope. For Jesus knows who we are and loves us, loves us because of who we are and loves us in spite of who we are. So together, as one body, let us confess our sin and brokenness. In the stillness of the font, we can, we can see, see your, your image, image reflected. reflected. In the, In busyness, the busyness of life, life we, we trouble, trouble the waters. waters. Soon, Soon enough, enough, the font, font of grace becomes, becomes a tempest, tempest and our sins threaten to overwhelm, overwhelm us. We have, we have been, been hurt by the stories we tell ourselves, ourselves hurt, hurt by, by the, the stories others, others are telling, telling and hurt by the stories we cannot stop telling. You have blessed us with pools of living water, yet we thrash about and drown in the evils of the world and our own foolishness. Speak over the waters, still our busy minds, silence our fearful stories, calm our frantic movements, and deliver us from yet another time of trial let, Let the, the waters of life wash away all our sin as we remember who we are and see your reflection again. This is your water.
Ho, oh, all who thirst, just like you, come to this water, just like you. Come and drink. Come and see your reflection here in these waters. Remember your baptism. Remember your baptism and be thankful. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Then, as people who are forgiven and freed, let us share the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Also with you. Amen. Please, please bow your heads for the prayer for illumination. Light of the world, fill this space. Help us hear you, see you, and reflect you. May the reading of your word push us to live wisely with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Amen. T today's scripture will be from Ephesians chapter 5. So be careful to live your life wisely, not foolishly. Take advantage of every opportunity because these are evil times. Because of this, don't be ignorant, but understand the Lord's will. Don't get drunk on wine, which produces depravity. Instead, be filled with the Spirit in the following ways. Speak to each other with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music to the Lord in your hearts. Always give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. All children and those who are young at heart are welcome to join me here in the front pew for a moment. Do you want to come sit up here while we Good morning. So I have something special here. What is this? What is this? It's a suitcase, right? But we're home today, right? This is home. This is our church home. So we wouldn't bring a suitcase to church usually unless we've been somewhere. And there are people today who are helping lead worship who've been somewhere. And Pastor Adam is going to talk about them. So these people who've been somewhere brought some stuff home. And I wanted, to, I wanted to show you some of the things that we might be talking about. One thing that they needed was a map, right? A map. What does a map do? Do you know? What's a map do? A ma it might tell you where you are, but it probably tells you how to get places. And so if you get turned around just yesterday, I figured out how one road led to another, and I was surprised and glad I had my map with me. Um, in church, we have a map to tell us um, where's the, instead of where at church, we sometimes talk about who, who's the person or who's the being that we're trying to get to in church. Yeah, Jesus, right? Jesus. So we have um, our map to get to God, and Jesus is the Bible, okay? So that's one thing we use to help find God, right? And you might also use your hymnal. That's another way we can get to God. Um, what's um, something that these folks brought back on, um, from their trip was that um, they brought back, what's this? A heart, and what, how do we feel usually when we talk about our heart? How does your heart feel? What does your heart have in it? Love, love right? So these people brought back more love for God and more love for themselves. They also brought back um, some prayer bracelets that you guys made. Does everybody have one here? Does anybody not have one? You might not have one, so I'm going to give one to you. 
So everybody um, was given bracelets that they could wear to remember um, to pray for one another. They might have brought back dirty laundry, so you have to get rid of that. <laughs> you don't want dirty laundry, but sometimes at church we have dirty laundry and we have to figure out how to clean it up and <laughs> how to get rid of it. And that's when we go back to the Bible because the Bible is our map for getting rid of dirty laundry. What's this? It's a really special friend. And the, the special friend's um, knucklehead isn't in here right now, so he's not here to tell you about it. But, um, you know, God gives us special friends to be with us every day. So here in church, look at all of these special friends you have. And when you're baptized, all of these people promise to always be your special friends. So when you... If you don't have a lovey or a stuffed animal or a friend that, you, um, um, that makes you feel better, there's somebody in church who can help you and who wants to be with you and may help you feel better. Another thing that we need as people of God, what's this? What's this? Water. It's a water bottle. So we know that God gives us life in the font because what's up here? What's this? Ooh, that surprised you. What's this? <laughs> oh, I'm not going to touch you yet. <laughs> so we know that God gives us water, which is life and love. And water is one way that God brings us all together and reminds us that we all have been given God's love and we all have been given God's life and that um, it's good that we can pull these things out and celebrate and give thanks when we're with God. All right, now before you guys go to the nursery or back to your seats, let's say a prayer. So we'll put our hands together and close our eyes and ask everybody to pray after me. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Help us to listen to you and love others every day. Amen. Okay, have a great day. Our second scripture reading today comes from uh, Psalm 34. So listen as the Spirit moves and speaks through this prayer and song. You who are the Lord's holy ones, honor the Lord. Because those who honor him don't lack anything. Even strong young lions will go hungry when they go without. But those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come. Come, my children, and listen to me. Let me teach you how to honor the Lord. Do you love life? Do you relish the chance to enjoy the good things? Then you must keep your tongue from evil. You must keep your lips from speaking lies. Turn away from evil. Do good. Speak peace. Go after it. This is the word of the Lord. As Meg said, I had the opportunity to travel with uh, some of our advisors from church and five youth from the church. We got to go to Montreat. It is a place that people there will say is a thin place. What they mean by that is they say, oh, it's such a thin place because the boundary between heaven and earth are so thinly separated at Montreat. I think that's a lot of nonsense. I'll be honest with you. I don't believe Montreat is thin. I do think the people there are a little bit thinner because they have to walk up and down that mountain all day. But I also think Montreat feels thinner to the people who are there because more often than not, if you go there, they make you sign a document that says, I'm coming to Montreat to be a child of God. And I'm coming to Montreat to recognize that the other people around me are also children of God. And part of that being means that I have to treat people in ways that reflect the fruits of the Spirit, that lead to the better things in life, that do all these wonderful, good, beautiful, kind, generous, loving, joyful, amazing things. So I don't think Montreat is so thin as much as it is people have made a choice 
to say, this is going to be a place where we don't get caught up in all the things that would distract and take us away. See, it's interesting to me that if you listen to the writer of Ephesians, they say, be careful. Be careful to live your life wisely. Don't live your life foolishly. Take advantage of every opportunity. Why? Because these are evil times. Now, I don't know what was happening back in the time when Ephesians was written. You know, it was about 2,000 years ago. We can all speculate. We can guess. We can say, here's what we think it was from the historical records. But it appears as we keep going on that there are some problems that the writer is going to name. They say, because of this, don't be ignorant, but understand the Lord's will. Don't get drunk on wine, which produces depravity. Instead, be filled with the Spirit in the following ways. Speak to each other with psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Sing, make music to the Lord in your hearts. Always give thanks to God the Father for everything, everything in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. What was the biggest problem? It sounds like wine. Those were evil times because people were doing a little bit of too much drinking. Maybe. Wine led to debauchery. Fine. Let's fast forward 2,000 years. How many more problems do we have now? Well, Montreat is a thin place, right? I got back from Montreat. I didn't have to do any grocery shopping because that was all taken care of by our wonderful cooks. I got back and I got to one of those self-checkout lines and I had like one of those packs of Kool-Aid that doesn't weigh anything, right? So I scan it and it says, please put the item in the bagging area. I did, it doesn't do anything because it doesn't weigh anything. And so then the machine starts yelling at me, please put the item in the bagging area. And I think, I don't know what to do. So I did that and then I had another pack, scanned it, same situation. I thought, what happens if I put two packs over there well, then it weighs enough that it got registered. The self-checkout line was almost like it was inviting me to shoplift Kool-Aid. But being the person that I was, I thought, you know, we just came back from Montreat. I shouldn't steal, even if it's just a 10-cent packet of Kool-Aid. I'm going to do this right. So I took all the groceries and went to the actual lane and checked out with a person so that I didn't have to worry about the evil temptation that was right there. Then I got in my car, and there are people who drive on the road alongside you, and they have different interpretations of rules. That's how driving works all the time. So there's lots of evilness that you could easily entertain by saying choice words to other drivers, by honking a horn in ways that may or may not be appropriate, by using your interpretation of rules and insisting that you are the only right person on the road. The world is full of evils and temptations. There's also something that I spend probably more time on than anything else, and it's right in my pocket, and you all have one, so don't look at me like you don't know this. It's got a little black mirror. Actually, it has a picture of Finch delightfully enjoying some bubbles. Those phones give you the ability to do all manner of good, but also all manner of trickery and mischief and evil. Somebody might send you an email, you might not like the tone that is behind that email, and so you might fire up your thumbs quickly and jot a response, hit send, and then five minutes later think, oh, maybe I misread that. Or you might think, oh, I wish I hadn't sent that. <laughs> or maybe you're not like me and you don't do that. I doubt it, because I've gotten some emails in my time as well. You can also look up almost any point of view and say, well, according to this website, I'm right. So I did some research, and it turns out I was right. <laughs> All manner of evil when we find ways to be right instead of compassionate or merciful. There are advertisements that follow you everywhere you go telling you that you are not good enough, you don't have enough, if you only use this product, you'd be thinner, you'd be prettier, you'd be smarter, you'd be faster, you'd be better at everything. There's also a cable news cycle. There's news everywhere, and news is always designed to make you afraid. It's going to tell you, see a cockroach in your hands or your house? 
call this number. We'll take care of all the bugs because your house is probably infested and you're probably going to die. Feel a weird pain that you didn't think was a thing? Well, guess what? It's probably a new COVID symptom. Find out more at 11. There are all manner of things in this world designed to distract, to take your attention, to pull you away. Montreat, thankfully, has terrible cell phone service, so you can't find out a lot of that information you're there. That's probably also why it's a thin place. But here's the truth. We're about to baptize a baby. And when we baptize people in this community, this space also starts to feel a lot thinner to me. Why? Because you are going to be forced, you're going to be asked, excuse me, to make a promise. And you've made this promise almost for three weeks in a row now, so you should be good at it. It should not be a surprise. The promise you will make is to raise this child, to raise John in the faith that we practice. It will be a promise to say, we're going to do our very best. We're going to mess it up, but we're going to do our very best. We're going to keep that roadmap of the Bible that Meg showed everybody front and center. We're going to care for one another. We are going to love you. We are going to help you in Sunday school. We are going to teach you. We are going to do all we can. And when we make those promises, it's so much easier to see one another as children of God. Why? Because there's an adorable face that reflects God's image today. There will be beauty in water. Meg's going to cry. It's going to happen. And it's going to be lovely because those are tears that reflect God's joy. You'll probably cry too. I'll probably cry. We'll all cry because we recognize in the font, in the stillness of water, the reflection of who we are. The psalmist and the epistle writer will say, these are evil times we're living through. And if they were evil then, there are so many more distractions nowadays. It's critically important that we do not participate in all of that. Paul will write to the church in Rome, brothers and sisters, because of God's mercies, I encourage you to present your bodies as living sacrifices, ones that are holy and pleasing to God. This is your appropriate priestly service. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Be transformed by the goodness and the grace of God so that you can figure out what is good, what is pleasing, what is mature. The question of the day should always be, what is mine to do? We have spent 10 weeks in this church talking about prayer. I guarantee you know an answer to that question. What is yours to do? How are you being called right now to pray, to care, to support, to love? What is yours to do? Mine is to try and preach and interpret the word. That's mine right now. Later today, it will be also to bear witness to the resurrection, to speak of beauty and love and life in situations of deep pain and sorrow and grieving as we say goodbye to Wesley Bowman. There are lots of things in this world Lots of ways that the world will try and take your attention. One of my favorite stories about this comes from Scripture, and it is found in the story of the first sin, where sin is named as sin in the Bible. And you'll think, oh, that's the Genesis story, and you're right, but it's probably not the Genesis story you're thinking of. Because in the Garden of Eden story, no sin is ever named. However, immediately after that story, you have the story of Cain and Abel. And they get together, and they go to give a sacrifice to God. And God, for whatever reason, loves Abel's sacrifice, but does not love Cain's sacrifice. And Cain is frustrated and hurt, and Cain does not understand what is going on. And he starts plotting and scheming, and God turns to him and says, If you do right, 
Sin stays away, but if you do not do right, sin is knocking on your door, waiting to come in. Another experience I had in our neighborhood was the other day, middle of dinner, somebody rings the doorbell. I think, what? Who's knocking on our door at such a time? I, because I'm not good with boundaries apparently, go and answer the door. And it is a very young person trying to sell us pest control. Now, our neighborhood doesn't allow solicitors, right? Whatever. They're still there. Still knocking on that door. This person said, hi, my name is, I don't remember their name. I'm with, I don't remember the company. I'm here to talk to you about your pest control. I'm going to guess that you have the same company that all your neighbors have, am I right? And I said, no. And he goes, oh, okay, that's interesting. And I said, no, 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 I'm not interested. It's not interesting. And he said, great. So I just want to tell you a little bit about what, what we've got going on. Of course, we've got this great new special. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it. Do you have time? And I said, I don't. And he said, great. I'm just going to keep going. And I said, that's not, you're not listening to me. It's not helpful. He kept going. And he said, here, we're here all about pest control. We help get rid of pests. And I said, all pests? And he said, yes, all pests. And I said, even ones that like come to your doorstep? And he said, oh yeah, certainly. We'll prevent them from getting into your house. And I thought, curious, how would you go about getting rid of somebody who was like right here, right now, and they couldn't hear the word no that was being said to them a number of times? And he paused and he looked at me and I said, I'm sorry, that was rude. Or maybe it was just direct. I don't know, but... I don't need to be salty to you. I'm trying to have dinner with my family. You're here to talk to me about pest control. Do you have a business card? I can look at it. I can get back to you. That's a long way of saying in the Pacific Northwest, I'm never going to call you. But in that moment, there was a person who was a pest to me, interrupting my flow, our family time, our dinner. And I chose not to bear kindness or the greatest witness or offer good, good words. I got salty. And so then I kind of recognized it and I said, I'm sorry. I know that you've probably had a hard day. It is hot. You've been doing the best you can. I know that you're trying to provide for your family. And yet, I just want to be with mine right now. We're not going to do the pest control, but I can still be kind to you. That's mine to do right now. Thank you. I'm going to wish you the best and have a good night. That was where that conversation ended. But there's something about that that's different than just being mean in that situation. See, praxis is this nice word that says you take what you know and you put it into effect. Praxis, it's a word that sounds a lot like the word practice, but it's spelled differently because it is different. Praxis is taking all of the theories in the world that you have that apply and bringing them to life. For church, praxis is trying to be the best Christian you can be at all times. Our scriptures today are saying, don't be ignorant. The best way to prevent that is to study scripture, to engage in those Bible studies, those small group conversations that you have with people to talk to your pastors, to talk to the people around you, to say, I read this thing, I got this devotion, I don't know, I don't know, I'm struggling with it. How can I, how can we help each other? In a moment, we're going to baptize John. We're going to surround him with hope. We're going to make a promise that we will practice the faith together. God has blessed us with a ton. So many gifts you have as a church. That does not mean that you will be perfect. Instead, there is this great gift of grace that is embodied in the font that reminds us we will stumble along the way. I have hurt the people I love more than anyone else in this world, probably worse than the people who I don't care about because I know how to say things that mean more to people who I care about. I know that I sometimes forget to do something that the people I love and care about really care about, and that can also cause hurt. I also know that the people who I love and care for are the best 
purveyors of grace in this world. And all of those people are present in these spaces that are thin. Because they say, God loves me, and God loves you, and we will work through this together. It's part of the praxis. Praxis means you're not going to do it right all the time. The goal is never perfection. You will not get there. But grace, mercy, and compassion are attainable. So if you have your cell phone, go ahead and take it out right now. Take it out, lift it up, open it up, pull down the screen, whatever you need to do to turn on a flashlight so that you have a light. We do this all the time at Montreat, so we're doing it here. Take that light out and hold it up. I know there are more cell phones in this room than I can see, so go ahead and find them. If you left them in your car, that's very responsible, but hold that up. Let the lights shine out so that people around you can see them. And part of your call as a Christian is to be the light of God to the world. This light is artificial. It only exists because you plugged it into a power source probably last night, and now you have enough battery to make this thing happen. However, the light of Christ never goes out. You have tremendous ways to hold that around you. So as you lower your phone and turn that light off, imagine that light going inside of you, shining brighter than even the LEDs on that phone. As much as I want to talk to you about the love of God which never ceases, I also want to be realistic and give you what you need to practice this in the world today. Ten weeks of prayer we have done. They were brilliant. You have all the tools and prep you need. The challenge is now to ask the question, what's mine to do, and then to do it. There are prayer bracelets right here. If you need something to help you, remember who you are. I wear one on my wrist all the time. Often, this is a good reminder that I am a child of God, that God loves me, and that the nine different bands on this bracelet each represent one of the gifts of the Spirit, which is a good thing to pursue. Better than uh, another BuzzFeed quiz, better than another uh, episode of Kim's Convenience on Netflix, better than any of the other distractions that might get in my way. If you want one of those bracelets, I have made a bunch. Even if you only wear it for a little bit, please know that that took about half an hour to make, and that is half an hour that I prayed for you, cared for you, tried to surround you in love. I will gladly make thousands more if it helps remind people that we are children of God, called to be God's light in this world. I also want you to know that you are never without God, that the Spirit dwells within you. So don't be ignorant in that way either. And when you find yourself anxious, overwhelmed, frustrated, any of the things that are not of God, breathe. Let your breath remind you that the Spirit of God is like the wind and it goes where it pleases. It is like a dove or a bird that flies where it will and lands where it does. Breathe and let the Spirit of God fill your nostrils, your lungs, your body, and be reminded. I guarantee you the world would be a more peaceful place if every one of us could take a deep breath before responding. Ten seconds may make all the difference in the world. Take those breaths. Breathe and find the center. Remember who you are. Every time you take a sip of water, let those waters be a reminder of baptismal grace of promises, not that God is going to forgive you, but that you are forgiven. Anything you've ever done, forgiven. Anything you're doing right now, already forgiven. Anything you will do, already forgiven. The waters of grace reflect the image of God and say, you are forgiven. So trust do all of that, and as you look at the world, ask the question, what is mine to do right now? Take a breath, drink some water, remember who you are, 
remember who God is, and then do it. This morning, we are glad to bring Marshall and Caitlin Hunter um, to the font with their boys, William and John Martin. Now, Caitlin and Marshall grew up in this church because their parents, Billy and Barbara Hunter, and Martin and Barbara Story joined St. Giles in the mid to late 70s. So that Marshall and Caitlin were baptized here. Well, you were probably baptized in the other building there. And they've grown up here along with their siblings. And Marshall and Caitlin were married here as well as their siblings. And William has been baptized here. So this is a family we have known for a long time and loved for a long time. And John Martin and William are grandchildren of these fine folk here, but they're also sort of our church's grandchildren because you all have loved their family and nurtured their family now for one, two, three generations. This is a really special, special gift. So we're especially glad that Caitlin's dad, John Martin Story, can be the elder for today. So hear these words from Scripture about baptism. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, 
one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all, in, in all. In baptism, God claims us and puts a sign on us to show that we belong to God. God unites us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. Then by water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the one church, not just St. Giles, but the church of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ. And we are joined with Christians in every time and place to do Christ's ministry of love and peace and justice. On behalf of the session, I'm happy and pleased to present John Martin Hunter to receive the sacrament of baptism. So Marshall and Caitlin, do you desire that John be baptized? If so, please say, I do. <laughs> Through baptism, you have heard these words so many times, and you know the covenant that God has established. Within this covenant, within God's promise, God promises to give us new life and to guard us from evil, to nurture us in God's love, and through the work of God's people. When we embrace this covenant, we turn away from that which is not God. We turn away from evil and turn towards Jesus Christ. So Marshall and Caitlin, I ask you therefore to profess your faith in Jesus Christ on behalf of John, who can't quite say it yet, and to confess your faith um, with the church. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, please say we do. Amen. Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, please say we will. We will. This sacrament lays solemn obligations upon you, the people of God. Will you be faithful to your calling as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, so that John Martin and all other children here may grow in the knowledge and love of Christ. If so, will you please stand? Now with the whole church and on behalf of John Martin, let us state what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. So let us pray. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things, people and plants and animals you sustain by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, at creation, your spirit moved over the watery chaos and brought forth from that chaos life and people and plants and animals. Then you led Israel out of slavery through water in the Red Sea and onto the promised land to freedom. In the waters of the River Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your Holy Spirit. Then by the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Jesus set us free from sin and death and opened the way to eternal life. So we thank you, God. We thank you for this water and for the waters of baptism that cover the church. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. From these waters, we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through these waters... We are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Send your Holy Spirit to move over this water now so that it might be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by it and raise John today to new life, embracing him in the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon him that he may have the power to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. Amen. 
You may be seated. Okay. Look at you, big boy. What is the name of this child? John Martin. John Martin, child of the covenant. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What do you think about these people? These people are your people now. They are your grandparents' people and they are your parents' people, and they are William's people, and now they are your people. And even if you go to Clemson, they will be your people. (laughs) And even if you don't go to Clemson, they will be your people, because you are now bound with them in the one body of Jesus Christ, and it's their job to help you That's right, look at them. Can you believe it? They're part of your family. They are going to help you and love you and teach you stories about Jesus because that's our job. All of us have jobs in this family, and you you don't know what your job is going to be yet, but these folks are going to show you how they love God and how God has called them to love the world. I know it's hard and scary sometimes, isn't it? Okay. But no matter what, even when you get scared, these people are gonna be with you. They're right there, it's okay. They're gonna be with you, and they're gonna show you the way home. It's okay. And they're not going to ever let you get too far. Oh, no. I'm going to hurry up. Okay. I know it. So when you get scared, these are going to be your friends who are going to play with you. They will, and they'll hold you and rock you when you need a nap. And when your mom and dad get tired and just don't know what to do, they are going to help you all because now we are one family. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we're coming home. We're coming. Okay. Look, and someday you're even going to be big and you're going to want to go away from your family. You're going to want to go to camp and to Montreat. And these folks are going to help you get there. <laughs> All right. Look, you made it home. Okay, John. There you go. So now I'm going to give him a blessing while he's safe in your... <laughs> May the blessing of God Almighty... There you go. The peace that passes understanding comes to find you in the arms of people who love you. And may God dwell in your heart forever. Amen. John Martin Hunter has been received into the Holy Catholic Church. Through baptism, God has made him a member of the household of God to share with us in the priesthood of Christ. I charge you, the people of this congregation, to nurture and love John Martin to continually share the good news of the gospel with him and to help him know and follow Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, we continue our worship with a period of prayer. As part of our prayer, we will pray the Lord's Prayer together. Because we are one body, and that body is made of many members, please pray the Lord's Prayer with the words that are comfortable, familiar, that feel the most holy to you. And that may be very different than the words that your neighbors use, and that's part of the beauty of the body of Christ. For we are many, and we are one. Let us pray. 
O oh God, on this day, we know that the world is full of mischief and evil. We see it proclaimed on the pages of the newspaper, on the scrolling bar at the bottom of the news feed, on the news we watch on TV, in the Facebook posts that others share or we ourselves repost. We know that there is lots of pain in the world because we have felt the sting of gossip. We have been victims of a cruel word, even kindly said. We ourselves have even said such things and followed them up by a convenient bless their heart, as if that in itself would not make the sword any sharper. Lord, we are your people, and we pray as your people for the reminder that we are called to let your light shine, not to hide it under a bushel, to be distracted and fall away, but that wisdom comes when our focus is on you. So give us wisdom that we might see with holy eyes, care for all who are sick, support all who are in grief, bear honesty to the world so that shame has no place, but that hope reigns supreme. Let waves of compassion flood all of the earth until our only song is one of mercy and alleluia, so that all the fires are extinguished, both literal and metaphorical, and that your world would be restored in all its glory. We pray for our sister Janelle, who fell on Wednesday and continues to recover from that fall. We pray for all those who are on our prayer list, all those whose prayers are on our hearts, and for your blessings for all of your children, John Martin, and each and every person in this room, that we may bear witness again and again, and where our witness stumbles, we might find the peace that passes understanding, the sister or brother who calls us back to the table for reconciliation, the words of mercy, that speak softly and loudly, healing as a balm in Gilead for all the wounds that we would otherwise inflict. O oh God, we are many and we are one. So draw us together as your church as we affirm the vows of baptism, the promise of community, the beauty and grace and wonder of the church. Praying as you taught, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will be done, be done on, on earth as just as it is in heaven. heaven. And give, give us this day our, our daily bread. bread. And forgive, forgive us, us our sins as, as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. And save us not into temptation, trial, but deliver us, us from, from evil. evil. For yours is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory, the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. What is yours to do? What is ours to do? What is mine to do? Great questions of stewardship, great questions of life. So as we offer back the gifts that we have been given, do so as a holy sacrifice, focused on what is good and pleasing and mature, on the things that bear witness and life and continue the work of this church. How is God calling you to give? and then give with joy. You can see that there are multiple ways to do that. There's a QR code that appears on screen. You can drop an offering off in the uh, baskets on your way out. You can pick up a prayer bracelet to remind you of who you are. You can volunteer to help with Sunday school. There are no shortage of ways to continue the life and ministry of this church. So find what is yours and do it. And then, with awe, ask, what else can I do? And continue to do the things that make the world the place of God's dream. Let us continue worship as we sing, we are one, in, or as uh, we engage in the hymn, we are one in Christ Jesus.
Somos uno en Cristo, somos uno, somos uno, uno solo. Somos uno en Cristo, somos uno, somos uno, uno solo. Un solo Dios, un solo Señor, una sola fe. Un solo espíritu y ese es el consolador. Please join us for the sending. What does the Lord require of us? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Sisters and brothers, this is a thin place. It is thin because you make commitments to practice, to care, to engage in the call that God has given. Do not let this be the only thin place you encounter today. Instead, your charge is to say, what's mine to do right here, right now, and how do I do it? How do I bear witness to the holy in ways that the light of Christ shines everywhere I go? Please rise as we depart in blessing. The preacher at Montreat concluded every service in the same way. He would say, when someone gives you a blessing, look them in the eye. Do not bow your heads, but look them in the eye, for they are giving you a gift. And when someone gives you a gift, you should get that gift gladly. Receive it with thanks. So, my friends, this blessing be upon you. Blessed are you, for you are a child of God. Blessed are you, for you bear God's light to the world. Blessed are you, because you will struggle and fall and give opportunities for reconciliation and grace that the world desperately needs. Let your song echo the songs of creation, that God created you. Let your witness bear witness to reconciliation, that Jesus forgives you. Let your song be full of the lyrics of the Spirit and the wisdom and peace that pass understanding. For the Spirit goes with you wherever you walk. So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, go to the world as light and love, now and forever. Amen. Amen.